For many of us, opening a new locomotive box for the first time is usually a thrill and a pleasure. And this one is certainly no exception. This is the newly released Great Western Railway Class 8750 060 pannier tank for O gauge, introduced by Minerva Models. It's actually a conversion to protocab on behalf of a customer who arranged with Minerva to have it sent directly to us. We are having the pleasure of opening the box and inspecting the contents first. It was only after making this video that I realised that in my eagerness to take a look at the loco that I hadn't taken the elementary precaution of putting a cushion on the table in case it slipped out of my hand. Normally the first step would be to check the stall current of the motor. Because our customer had discussed this with Minerva, we were convinced that the locomotive control unit for the protocab system would be able to handle the current draw of the model. Just to make sure however, we temporarily soldered a locomotive control unit cable to the motor, put the protocab locomotive control unit and battery in a trailing wagon, and took it for a spin on our Embryo O-Gauge Cornish branch layout. So let's get down to the actual conversion to protocab. The first step is to remove the body from the chassis and the instructions are to remove the two water balancing pipes from beneath the pannier tanks. Having removed the fixing screws, we can put the body to one side for the time being and reveal that the chassis has plenty of space in a very compact motor with the DCC ready socket at the leading end. A large flywheel will help to overcome the cogging effect of the motor and make for a smoother ride. Turning our attention to the body, we're looking inside for any space in which to put the protocap battery, the locomotive control unit, and the 9601 plug charging unit. The first thoughts are that the larger protocab battery will fit inside the pannier tanks, whilst the 0502 locomotive control unit, having removed the DCC ready socket, will sit nicely on the platform in front of the motor. Cables from the pickups to the DCC ready socket and from the DCC ready socket back to the motor are taped down to the top of the motor with two tabs. Although in earlier conversions we recommended using the DCC ready socket for convenience, we now recommend soldering the cables from the 0502 locomotive control unit directly to the terminals of the motor. You can now unsolder the leads for the motor and for the pickups on the DCC ready socket. Although the wheel pickups are no longer needed to collect current from the rails, we recommend retaining them in place because they also perform the secondary function of keeping the wheel set central on the chassis. You could unsolder the leads on the phosphor bronze pickups, but if you retain them, make sure to insulate them with a spot of hot glue or insulating tape. Although the first thoughts were to put the 0502 LCU on top of the space vacated by the DCC ready socket, in the event it was found that it would be too high inside the body to accommodate it. Also, connecting the LCU to the battery might prove difficult, as well as where to position the plug charging unit. We also considered removing the platform and lowering the spigots underneath. In the event, we found a far better solution. The large battery fits transversely across inside the bunker, and there is sufficient space, even with the battery tucked underneath the spectacle plate, to put the other components. 
to hold the 0502 locomotive control unit, the 9601 plug charging unit and the battery securely inside the bunker. We made up a frame from 40 thou plastic card. Holes were drilled and filed at appropriate places to enable the cable runs to be put through and reinforcing pieces of plastic added, particularly to provide a strong and secure base for the plug charging unit. The next consideration was how to get the motor lead from the LCU to the motor. In this case, it was decided to drill a hole in the metal footplate of the locomotive. A drop of hot glue around the hole would prevent the metal of the footplate from wearing the cable. Having carried out a test that the components and the frame fit into the bunker, the next stage is to work out how to get the cable from the locomotive control unit to the motor. For convenience, and to make the harness removable from the locomotive without having to unsolder the leads from the motor, we decided to use the 9121 LCU to motor extension lead. This enables the lead from the motor to be unplugged from the lead to the harness. It comes with two holes for fixing to a body or a chassis. In this particular case, in order to make the socket as close to the edge of the footplate as possible, we took one of the holes off, just utilising the other one to fix it in place. The lead for the LCU is soldered to the back of the 9121 and the connector fed through the hole in the footplate to attach to the LCU. The 9121 is then secured to the footplate with a blob of hot glue. This shows that the 9121 is not visible when seen from the side of the locomotive. Now to fit the lead from the 9121 to the motor connection. When we earlier unsoldered the leads from the DCC ready socket, we left them soldered to the motor terminals. This is because the length of the lead provided with the 0502 LCU would not be long enough to reach the motor. So we're using the connected lead supplied by Minerva for the extension. You'll notice that before soldering the leads to the existing cables, we have cut the heat shrink supplied with the 0502 LCU in half and threaded each piece onto the existing cables. Having soldered together the ends of the cables, thread the heat shrink over the soldered joint and apply the edge of the soldering iron to shrink the tube and to make a firm fitting. The body is a very close fit onto the chassis and even the two grooves on the chassis to provide for the pickup wire to go up to the DCC ready socket, these are not big enough for the LCU cable. Fortunately, the footplate metal is quite thin at that point, so it's easy to cut a small groove into the footplate, which is quite hidden from sight when the footplate is fitted back onto the chassis. Now comes the final fitting. It's essential that the plug charging unit is securely in place, most importantly when inserting and removing the charging cable. Also, the LCU and the loco switch need to be firmly in place. As ever, we turn to our scrap box of plastic sprues and use one cut down to act as a firm foundation for the 9601 plug charging unit. To provide cushioning and a heat sink for the 0502 loco control unit, we take a piece of the 9963 heat conducting pad that is included with the 0502 and cut it to size, avoiding the connectors on the back of the LCU. We can now place the LCU against the harness with the antenna facing upwards. The antenna will therefore be pointing towards the back of the bunker. We now glue a cover plate to the back of the harness to make sure that no glue is spilt onto the 9601. We've covered it with a pair of paper tabs. These will be removed once the glue has set. For additional strength, we have taped some sellotape at each end of the harness. Now we make sure that the loco switch pad, the copper pad, 
is in position to be fixed to the back of the harness. Now, before fitting the harness finally in place, would be a good time to do a test run of the locomotive. And when the locomotive is working satisfactorily, the harness can now be finally fitted in place. Placing the battery in first and tucking it underneath the spectacle plate, then finally sliding the harness in place behind it. To tidy the appearance of the bunker, another plastic plate can be made up, cutting it to shape and also making holes for the plug charging unit and the blitz light and charging light to be visible. Finally, fully charge the battery in the locomotive by placing the 9950X cable into the plug charging socket. The light will show red while it's charging and will turn to green when fully charged. It's best to hold the cover plate down when removing the cable, which is best affected by unscrewing it rather than pulling it out. Replace the water balancing pipes in the slot under the pannier tanks and fix the body to the chassis using the fixing screws that were removed earlier. Thank you for watching this customer support video. If you have any questions or any comments, do please email us at support at protocab.com. Mm -hmm.